So <laughs> this is the uh, founder of Meta. So next year, I think it's gonna be huge for virtual reality. And I'm keying in, I'm visiting all the virtual reality companies I can get, get in front of. And I'm comparing notes with other people. Like I just went to 20th Century Fox down in uh, LA and uh, compared with, uh, with uh, Ted Chilowitz, who's the uh, futurist at 20th Century Fox. And he has two labs, one for Oculus and one for Valve. They're on separate sides of his campus, and he's been working with them for a couple years now. And so he's also been working with all the camera companies, and he's been working with all the bleeding edge weird companies, uh, one of which is Magic Leap. And so he, he uh, has a good context for where the industry is going. And somebody like that really helps uh, uh, aim me uh, into a direction. So let me just fire hose you some, some things. Next year, uh, we're going to see uh, the premier virtual reality headsets come out. Um, and why do you care about this? Why, what, you know, what's the story you're going to hook into? Well, this is going to be the dominant story at CES. Um, when you wear, how many people have had like an Oculus Rift or a, a, a Sony Morpheus on? Just a couple, maybe five percent of the audience. When you have the latest ones on your face and you get the latest demos, they're mind blowing. And that uh, emotion that you feel or that the people feel after getting a, a demo of this stuff is going to translate into press and is already translating into press. And people don't understand it. Time Magazine just had a cover story about why VR is gonna change the world. And everybody was making fun of Palmer Lucky, the guy who ran, runs Oculus because he has a goofy picture. They're missing the point. This is gonna keep coming at you as a story. So let's just talk about what's gonna go on. There's three premium headsets that are, I think are gonna suck up all the oxygen because they're the ones that you're gonna come over my house and try and go, oh my God, those are cool. Uh, you have Oculus Rift, you have Sony Morpheus, and you have Valve's uh, uh, Vive, which is done with HTC. Some people say the valve is a little bit better than the other two because it has more sensors. It lets you move around a little bit more. I really don't care. <laughs> those, all three of those headsets, the demos are so stunning that you're gonna, it, when you try them for the first time, you're gonna come away with a lot of emotion and the press people are coming away with a lot of emotion and we're watching how normal people react to it. I just spoke at Cable Labs, which is the R&D arm of the cable industry and they're doing R&D work with normal people, getting them in front of these headsets to watch their reaction and watch you know, sort of their price sensitivity, uh, watch uh, what kind of language they use. And the language they use is very emotional, very bullish. I want one of these, I want it now. How much does it cost? How do I get one? They're asking that kind of question. So Consumer Electronics Show, so these three headsets are coming out Valve is coming out later this year. Uh, Oculus is coming out in the first quarter of next year. Along with that, so these are $1,500, dollars $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
but they're getting they're finally sharp enough to actually use you know and and replace your laptop screen with and so you're starting to see surgeons using these and uh, oil field workers enterprise kind of companies and kind of workers using these uh, the costs will continue to come down over the next 18 months well over the next uh, 80 months really because these things are going to keep coming at you um, they made the uh, intellectual property that got sold to Microsoft for the HoloLens so when you see uh, all the hype about Microsoft HoloLens which is uh, a screen in front of you that's smaller these guys uh, redesigned their technology to make a bigger screen um, it's pretty cool but I don't see it coming out for the consumer anytime soon so there's a whole bunch of glasses like this you'll see at CES. There's also a whole bunch of things where you put your mobile phone. In fact, did I bring the shit or not? There's a whole bunch of things like this. Uh, this is the Verge VR where you put your phone in. Uh, Samsung Gear VR has something like this. Uh, Google Cardboard is going to uh, release 5 million Google Cardboards to New York Times subscribers this year. And that's a, a, a $10 device that you stick a phone into. Um, these are pretty good. They're not as good as the high-end Oculus, the, the Sony Morpheus. Um, the phone does, obviously doesn't have as good a GPU in it, so it can't throw as many polygons at your eyes. It's not quite as realistic. It's not quite as good as at video gaming. And <clears throat> what Oculus did when I uh, visited them 10 days ago they brought me into a room, and then they had me uh, hold two controllers, little controllers in my hands that had a ability to grip them and had a string on them so I couldn't drop them. And, it, and he put the control, the headset on me, and then he went in the room next door and said, okay, just wait a few minutes, I'll be in to join you. And boom, I was in a virtual world with a guy with a table and this table had um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, a, a little train toy. I could grab it, look at it, throw it, which is cool. And it tumbled away. Uh, and then he said, oh, let me put some more things out. And all of a sudden, more stuff appeared. Fireworks appeared. He goes, pick up the lighter, OK? Light the lighter and light the fireworks. And it lit like a real firework. And I could. Uh, it was like a sparkler. Then I picked up another one, and it was like a bottle rocket. And bottle rockets went. <laughs> and then I, he put a gun out. And I played with a gun, and I was able to shoot a gun. And I was shooting him, and he was shooting me. And uh, and we had a little gun play, <laughs> and we had target practice with various things. And where Facebook is going to take this, in other words, is a social uh, room, a social behavior. It's Facebook. Valve, on the other hand, uh, has more video gamers and more developers for video games. So I have a feeling that their visual experiences are going to be stronger on the Valve. But this is going to be a, a story we're going to write about. Let me just dive through these things. So we talked about the headsets. This is, again, another look at the ODG. Let's talk about cameras. <clears throat> so long, as this world starts cooking along, we're going to need uh, content for these headsets, whether we get a, a Samsung Gear VR, which is $200, or this uh, Merge VR, which is $120, or we get a Google Cardboard for free. Uh, we're going to need content. We're going to want to see music. We're going to want to see travel. We're, we're going to want to see uh, uh, plays. How many people have seen the play uh, Sleep No More in, on Broadway? Yeah. Um, let me see if I can explain this. A normal play you watch on the stage like this, and you're in the audience. Sleep no more, you walk into a warehouse and the play happens around you. And this is set up for uh, uh, Oculus Rift. I want to be in a play like this from now on. I don't want to see a play where I have to watch it on a stage. I want to see the play happen around me. In fact, <clears throat> when I went to 20th Century Fox, um, they showed me a movie with Reese with Witherspoon, and I, I put on the movie, and I'm in a forest, and I'm looking around and enjoying this forest, 
and then I hear a voice and the voice is getting stronger. It's somebody talking to herself and she's wearing a backpack, this Reese Witherspoon, and she comes and sits down and starts talking to herself. And then I hear a second voice behind me and I turn around and there's somebody sitting there. He had me run the movie again and had me watch the rock behind me and she never appeared. And I said, what, how did that happen? The actress behind me only appears if I actually look there and then move my head and look here. Mm. So we're going to see new kinds of interactive movies. This is another story that's going to fill in. What's entertainment going to be like in this new world? Well, we're going to see a whole bunch of new cameras. I, I bought the GoPro um, camera. I have six GoPros on a little ball. Um, it costs about $5,000 total to buy the whole setup. And you have to, because you have to have uh, expensive software to stitch the cameras together into a, a sphere. Sphere cam is going to come out any, any day now and is going to do the stitching in the camera. It's going to be about $1,500. So you're seeing camera iteration happen very, very quickly. And GoPro is working on a camera that has two cameras and is probably going to come out around the time of Consumer Electronics Show. And I would guess that's going to be less than $1,000. So we're seeing a lot of iteration cameras. Uh, Google's working with GoPro on a back-end system for a professional camera. We're seeing startups like Jaunt. In fact, I think I have a picture of Jaunt here. Jaunt has a camera that they're developing. This is their old one. They've already come out with a newer one, which is, um, has uh, a better, better camera systems built in. We're seeing uh, cameras like this one from V360 that has a mirror. Um, the mirrored ones don't do a whole sphere, so you can't look up and you can't look down at your feet like you can with my GoPros. Uh, but they're a lot easier to film with and they're a lot cheaper. These are gonna be less than $500. Um, but they show a strip all the way around and you can see it on your iPhone. Um, <clears throat> this guy is bringing out uh, Gyroptics, which is a three lens system now his camera is $500 or less, but it's lower resolution. So it's probably good for the Google Chrome or the Google Cardboard style stuff, but not good enough for the Oculus Rift or the Valve, the premium headsets. And his uh, whole story is he wants to miniaturize this so it gets into the cell phone. So in five or seven years, you're gonna buy a cell phone with two or three lenses on it and it's gonna have this technology built right into the cell phone and it does all the stitching for you. We're seeing professional cameras. So this is a, a bigger camera, about this big, and it has uh, 12 lenses, uh, six camera positions with two lenses each. So you get stereo lenses and it's designed for professional sports. So if you see a virtual reality being used at the Super Bowl or the Olympics, or last night I had dinner with the, the IT guy from the Warriors and they're playing with this. Um, you're gonna be able to, to uh, experience a basketball game without going to the game. That might sound stupid to us, but he says there's a huge demand in China for American basketball teams. And they're trying to bring the uh, court experience to other places in the world where they don't yet have American basketball, and this is gonna be worth billions of dollars to somebody somewhere soon. VR risks, right now, uh, some of the stories you're gonna see is it's dorky, <laughs> it's big, it's ugly, it's expensive, and those are part of the trends as well, the trend stories. So if I was writing a, a story about VR around consumer electronics, I, I might choose one of those story angles as well, and you'll see lots of stories and you've already seen some coming out. So there'll be hype stories, because people like me are very, very hyped, and there'll be anti-hype stories as well. And you can pitch all sorts of other things in, into the, those storylines. If you know those are gonna be the dominant big stories, uh, you can, if you can come up with something to say, uh, you can fit in there as well. This company is Blipar. It's a startup that's doing really well. It's an augmented reality uh, system. So it uses software on your iPhone and you aim it at a box of Cheerios or even a dog. And it recognizes that and does a visual search on it and presents more information. This company's 
really well positioned for the five, 10 year uh, trends of uh, Magic Leap and HoloLens. Because if I had HoloLens on and I look at something, I want to tell what kind of bag is that, you know? And I want to ask my HoloLens, what kind of bag is that? Go find it so I can buy it for my wife, that kind of thing. And his technology is a small step, a long way to that. And there's going to be more.